kind of see. And your, your controller is fine, as well as the beats, and more than likely there's something wrong with the diffuser and teller outside the pump. So if you check for any obvious leaks and any clogged lines and that's not the problem, then definitely when you have a symptom like that, it's probably your diffuser is melted or warped or your impeller is not working properly and that's what's causing that uh, pump to run that way. There is the diffuser or the impeller inside the pump is actually cracked and sometimes the diffuser gets melted and that causes a problem where your pool's not priming well. So all you have to do is take these six bolts, there's one here and there's two three, four, five, and six all around this and the motor should slide right out of this pump. Sometimes there's, they're bolted down to the ground, you have to check to make sure it's not bolted and you just remove those bolts if they are and this thing pulls out and I'll show you what a diffuser looks like in an impeller. So there's six bolts, you just gotta loosen these up and you might have one with a clamp here and you just unclamp it and then come off. Now sometimes you'll have to change the housing gasket when you open it but more than likely it's gonna be okay um, putting it back together without changing the housing gasket. Okay, so after you loosen these bolts, it should slide right off of the pump. The motor should slide and right off. You might off. have a pump with a clamp. So to get this off, you just simply un undo this clamp here, and the pump and motor will separate really easily. And more than likely, with this particular kind of pump, you'll need to replace the housing gasket. It's a round gasket. You just put it in there when you, before you reattach it. Make sure you lube it up with the magic lube before. So again, it's pretty easy. With this one, you just take the clamp off and the pump and motor can separate pretty easily. If you have a Hayward Super 2 like this one, you'll just pull it off and you'll see the impeller right here underneath the diffuser. And definitely need to check that for wear and you'll see if it's damaged or not. Pretty quickly, you'll see the front melted down or something like that. Pentair Whisper, if you have a Pentair Whisper flow pump, you'll have the diffuser sitting in there like that in front when you pull the motor off. You've got two little Allen wrenches you have to actually open up to get the diffuser off on the Pentair ones, so just be aware of that. And then that will expose the impeller, and you can check the impeller to see, for, check it for wear at that point. The fuses are a very important part of your pump, and you can see it sits right there in front where the basket is, and that's the first part of the pump where the water goes through. This one here, you can see that the uh, diffuser gasket's pretty worn out. And so the diffuser sits right there, and that's what pulls the water to the impeller. So if it is warped or melted, it's not going to pull the water, and you're going to have a pump that's almost cavitated. You might have your pressure down like below 10 on your filter and you'll you be wondering why it's not going up and that's because the diffuser is melted or damaged. You want to make sure you get the exact diffuser for your pump when you replace it. Um, they come in different sizes for different pumps and also the same pump may have two different ones for different horsepower. So that's very important with the diffuser. and also look at the impeller. This is an impeller for a Pentair pump. See if it's cracked. Usually it cracks right here where it screws in to the shaft of the motor. And you'll see a crack here in front. And this, could, this is pretty worn down also. And that could cause a problem. I'm gonna check to see if the impeller spins freely. And this one's really not spinning well. That's one reason why it probably burned down. So again, make sure your impeller can actually spin. And that could be one problem. And here's another impeller. You can see it spins really freely, so this one's working good. I'll show you real quick how to get the impeller off and change it. You have to do this when you change out your pump, I mean your motor. If your motor burns out, you have to do this because the impeller usually is still good and you can reuse it. Or if the impeller is cracked, you can also change it out. I'm going to go ahead and open the back of the pump. They're all slightly different, but most of them have two screws holding them on. And this thing should just pop right off. Usually you'll see the impeller uh, back end of it here and you can grab it with a wrench. This one here looks like the capacitor is right in the way, so I'm going to move that real quick. Okay, so I moved the capacitor out of the way and you can actually see now the impeller 
shaft where I'm going to have to hold it with the wrench. And here's a better look at it. I turned the motor up on its side. And uh, it's easier with two people, but I'm going to go ahead and do it here. I'm going to get the wrench. I'm going to hold this. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the impeller. So I'm going to have to rearrange the motor real quick. Okay, so I have the wrench there holding it. And I'm going to go to the front by the impeller. You can also use a half inch wrench and kind of jam it in there like this and then get the impeller and turn it to get it off if you don't have a big wrench to grab it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over while this is jammed here against this and I'm going to go ahead and turn the impeller. That wrench is holding that part on. I'm going to go ahead and turn the impeller and then I'm going to get this off. So the impeller actually goes off the opposite way. Instead of going this way to get it off, I turn it this way. And while that's being held there... <laughs> hold it a little tighter, bud. Okay, we got the wrench back on back there, and I'm going to go ahead and keep turning, and it should come off. And I think I got the impeller off now. There we go. And then whenever you do the impeller, you also do the seal. So I'll show you how to do the seal with the other pump. It's pretty jammed on here, so I'm going to use this wrench to try to turn it. I'm having trouble getting it off. This is the Pentair Whisper Flow Pump. I already have the impeller loosened, so I'm going to take it off and show you how to change the seal. And then you'll see the seal in here. And you have the ceramic part right here, and you have another part right here on this face. You should be able to pop it off with a screwdriver. Fairly easy. You can use a screwdriver to wedge it out. If you have to, you can take this part off and you can hammer it out from the back. So the piece should come out nicely. You want to carefully open a new one. Make sure you get the right seal for your pump. Um, it's online, whatever pump you have and motor, you'll know what seal to get. You want to be careful not to touch the ceramic on the seal. If you get any fingerprints on there, it could cause it not to seal properly and it will leak. You want to carefully put the new one in there. You can press down with the edge of a screwdriver to get it to fit in there. Carefully not to touch the ceramic. You want to get that in there snug. The one out of the impeller, pretty easy with a screwdriver also. And when we put this in, you want to be careful not to touch it. So what I do is I put it down, and then I use the cardboard that it came in, and I use it to push it down with my hand, and push it in there good. You want to make sure it's in there snug, and that's what makes the gives you the proper seal. If you don't have to do this correctly, water will leak when you put it back together. And we'll just reattach the impeller, and then it's going to be ceramic on ceramic. So it's pretty easy. And we'll just screw back the impeller in. That's how you replace the seal when you change the impeller or change your pump out. And check your impeller also for cracks. This one here is cracked here and it's worn down. This definitely needs to be replaced. That could be causing the problem with your pump. So when you replace the impeller, it's got to be the exact horsepower for your motor. Otherwise, it'll burn it out really quick. So you got to make sure you get it. I suggest if you're going to get a diffuser or an impeller, you bring it into the local pool store. Tell them your pump, horsepower of your motor, and they'll be able to match up the parts you need. And you also want to check the impeller for wear inside the thread itself that goes on the motor shaft. And also for the front. You can tell this one's pretty worn down. And there's a wear ring that goes on the impeller itself that lets you know when the impeller is worn down and needs to be replaced. So if you look at the schematic of the Super 2 pump, you'll see the diffuser, and you'll see the impeller in there. And those are the two parts that I was showing you outside. And here's the Pentair Whisper Flow. It also has a diffuser and the impeller there. And that way you get an idea. You can look up the schematics of your particular pump and motor online, and you can actually see the parts.